What's up guys, welcome to one of the most important videos you'll see if you're looking for Warzone 2 information. This is going to be the controller settings and so we're going to start off straight away with the controller section of the video. You want to go down to where it says controller vibration, make sure you have that off. The same with trigger effects, they're both going to be distractions and you don't want them. Next up is your sensitivity, I like to have mine on 7. If you rush then have it higher, if you don't then have it lower. ADS sensitivity multiplier is on 0 0.80, just slows things down a bit once you aim down sights. Then when you go to interact and reload behavior you want to prioritize the interact section. It's similar to something we had on the last war zone but basically if your gun needs to be reloaded but you want to open a chest if you press square to open that chest it's actually going to reload your gun instead which can be really annoying so i do prioritize interact then with armor plate behavior you want to apply one if you get caught in the animation where you're applying all the enemies just going to have it a really easy time killing you so yeah definitely have apply one and then onto the advanced controller settings of course you want aim assist on i'd keep everything on default if i were you and then for your focus multiplier i have that on 0.90 but that's basically when you're aiming down sight with a sniper and you're trying to do a steady aim you want your ads sensitivity transition timing on instant then next is going to be something quite important which is the dead zones you want to have this on as low as possible if you get stick drift then uh, obviously put them up a bit higher but you want as minimal input as possible so you can have edge milliseconds do make a difference in gunfights in Call of Duty so yeah have them as low as possible. Tactical sprint I think I might give it a try on single tap rather than having to double tap every time if I want to sprint out with a tactical sprint. Automatic airborne mantle I might turn that off I'd like to be able to be in full control of my mantles. Then we have parachute auto deploy I don't know if any of you guys remember but last year I we all had that off because the game will set you to draw your parachute about 30 meters off the ground which means enemies can shoot you down pretty quickly so if you turn this off you can choose to deploy your parachute about 10 meters off the ground so it's less likely the enemy's going to kill you whilst you're parachuting down to the ground you want to keep your backpack alternate control off until the game's been out for a while as there's really no saying if this is going to be a good thing to have on or not then weapon mount exit delay we want to have that on short and then quick c4 detonation is on and then finally for this section you want to go to overlay behaviors and you want to change double tap danger ping delay to short just means when you press an up on d-pad twice to ping an enemy you can do it pretty quickly and it stops the delay next up is graphics it's quite an important one to look at here but most people want on demand texture streaming on unless you're playing on a phone hotspot or something where you have limited data then definitely turn it off world motion blur weapon motion blur off film grain off depth of field off all things like that are gonna make your screen blurry and then this next thing does the opposite fidelity fx cast whatever it is sharpens your image i put that to about 30 you don't want to make your image too sharp but at least you can see some enemies that would be in low lit areas a bit easier with this on field of view i'd have that on 115 last year we were playing with about an 80 or even 60 fov which was rubbish then for first person camera movement and third person camera movement just have them on least you don't want your screen shaking around like mad you want that on low as possible and obviously your brightness is on 50 most of the time and safe area as wide as possible next up for audio i found that home theater works really well here and obviously keep your master volume on full music you can have lower because when i record i like to have that on low or off completely next up is interface and there is a few things you can go in here such as color customization i have the enemy set to a bright pink color rather than the dull red that is with the game naturally especially if some of you are colorblind this is definitely a good option because you can tamper with it and change to whatever color you want mini map shape you definitely want to turn that onto square just gives you more of the map to see and when you're playing games like warzone Having a look at the map to find out where enemies are on the UAV and things is very important, so the more space the better. Player names you want on full name, half of the time when you're shooting at an enemy, all you're shooting at is a red tag anyway, so definitely want as much writing as you can see above an enemy's head. Then for centre dot, you want to have this on and put it on larger, it basically helps hip firing hell of a lot. It just puts a dot in the centre of your screen, like it says on the tin, so you always know where to be hip firing or pre-aiming. Put that dot on an enemy and start firing, you're going to hit a few shots. Then if you have the option, turn crossplay off. Mouse and keyboard players will snap onto you like crazy. Of course, at long ranges, you have aim assist, which is going to benefit you there. But in close quarters, it's going to feel like people are snapping onto you, which is not nice at all. So if you can turn crossplay off, definitely do it. And that is the video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe for more Call of Duty tips and tricks. I'd really appreciate it trying to get to 9K. But I hope you have a great day and peace.